Hello everybody and welcome back to another Kings of War Battle Report. I'm Visibly Riley and this week we have Elves vs Salamanders in this 2300 point battle of Fool's Gold. First off we have my opponent's Salamanders list which opens with a Horde of Ceremonial Guard with the Brew of Strength and Effigy of Fire. Then we have two Tyrant Hordes both of whom have Effigies of Fire and then one has the J-Boots the other has the Potion of the Caterpillar. Then we have two Regiments of Rhinosaur Caval uh, Cavalry. Then we have a Regiment of Ancients with the Effigy of Fire, a Clan Lord on Fire Drake with a Brew of Sharpness, a Phoenix, a Troop of Ancients with an Effigy of Fire, two Lakilodons, and our Tockle. Now normally this is where I talk about my thoughts on the army, but I'll actually be doing that at the end of the video if you want to skip ahead to there. I don't know why you would, but it would kind of ruin the ending. But anyway, it'll be done down there. Now I know that there are also 15 points missing from this list. I don't know what they are, but the rest of this is correct. Anyway, moving on to my elf army, we open with a horde of kindred tall spears with the hammer of measured force. Then we have two regiments of palace guard, one of whom has the mace of crushing. Then we have a regiment of stormwind cavalry with the chant of hate, three troops of kindred archers, a horde of draken riders with the brew of strength, two regiments of silver breeze cavalry, an elven king with the boots of the seven leagues, saber tooth hunting cat, shard blade, and a horse, Argus Rodinar. And then two Elven Archmages, both of whom have Lightning Bolt 5, and then one also has the Boomstick for Lightning Bolt 8, and a Horse. And again, we'll be doing list reviews at the end. So, moving on to the scenario, which was Fool's Gold. Uh, Fool's Gold is another bluff scenario, so as a refresher on bluff tokens, each player has five bluff tokens, two of which have zeros, two have one, and one has a two. Uh, you will place them face down, so you no one knows what the values are until the designated point in the game, which in Fool's Gold is at the end of round three, you flip all the bluff tokens upright, and then that's what the objectives are worth. Otherwise, they're deployed as objectives, they're treated as objectives, they're just objectives that are secret for a bit. So the ones that are worth two are worth Worth two, the ones are worth one or worth one, and the zeros are just taken off the table. So anyway, let's look at what that looks like. Oh, you do have to deploy them on your opponent's side of the field. That's the last bit. So here it is. Uh, the ones in red are the ones I've deployed. This one looks like it's on my side of the table, but I show you, I, I think it's exactly writing this line. Uh, my opponent and I did something that uh, we used to do a whole lot while playing Blood Bowl, which was uh, we just take the tokens and flick them, and wherever they end up is where they were. And so you'll see like this line is due to some weak flicks or flying into this hill and stopping. Uh, and then at the end of all the tokens deploy uh, deployed, we then adjusted them to make sure that they're 12 inches away from each other, 3 inches away from impassable, so on and so forth, uh, starting with the ones that we uh, threw first and then moving from there. Uh, as an added benefit... I know what this token is, but I don't know what any of these four are. <laughs> so I also shuffle them. Again, it's just for fun. So if you guys are looking for fun variants, I actually really recommend this. It makes for a very exciting game. So moving on to the terrain, we open with two height nine forests. Then we have two height one graveyards, three height three hills, uh, four height two obstacles, and two height six uh, impassables. Now, I don't know if my opponent wanted to run these as height 5 or height 6, uh, but I was thinking they were height 5 during this game. Uh, so anyway, I I'm just going to write down height 6 there. You might notice that again, uh, this is not my terrain. That is because we had another table uh, over here that was playing on my stuff. So you won't get to see the painted Hank or is it Bobby Hill for right now. So anyway, let's move into deployment with the... Uh, what are these? Salamanders. I know what the army is. Uh, so with the Salamanders, starting on their left side of the deployment, actually, let's go back a picture. Uh, so the Salamanders just chose the side they were on, or I chose the side that I was on. <laughs> Whatever. It's a bit of psychology. So anyway, starting with the Salamanders' left side, as I would see it, we have a Rhinosaur Cab Regiment. Behind them is the first Tyrant Horde with the Caterpillar Potion and Effigy of Fire. Then we have the Clan Lord on Fire Drake with the Brew of Sharpness an ancient regiment with the effigy of fire and again uh this is a beautiful army i've been playing my opponent here has been playing salamanders or as they were back in uh warhammer lizardmen uh almost as long as i've known them and yeah they've just played them the whole time so i played against this or other lizardmen variants that they've run for years and i really like playing in some really bright colored army anyway to the right of that we have the tyrant horde with j boots and effigy of fire in front of it, the Rhinosaur Cav Regiment, and then off to the right of it, our Tockle. Then off to the right of that, we've got a Phoenix, a Horde of Ceremonial Guard with the Brew of Strength and Effigy of Fire. To the right of that, we have the Double Lachilodons, and finally, the Ancient Troop. 
Uh, in case you're wondering about the being like, what what is this inspiring bubble? Keep in mind that all ancients inspire. So uh, helping out there. Anyway, facing off against this right side is uh, my Stormwind, Stormwind Regiment with the Chant of Hate, all on their lonesome. Then to the right of that, we have both of my Arc Mages. The horse one is obviously on a horse, and the other one isn't, so the Lightning Bolt bar Battery. To the right of that, we have the Palace Guard Regiment with the Mace of Crushing. To the right of that, we've got the Meat of My Army with the Tall Spear Horde with the Hammer of Measured Force. Behind them are one, two, and three Kindred Archer Troops, so all three of them, and Argus Rodinar inspiring this whole area. Uh, and finally, my last Palace Guard Regiment holding down that flank. To the right of all that, we have both the Silver Breeze Regiments and the Draken Rider Horde with the Brew of Strength, and the Elven King with every upgrade, just uh, scouting forward a little bit to uh, get onto this hill and threaten some stuff, while still inspiring uh, this, this area at least. And anyway, that's that, so let's get into turn one. So turn one, my opponent won the roll-off, but chose to let the Elves go first. And uh, it's an interesting decision, because I, I guess they were thinking that they can't shoot turn one, but I don't know if, if I would really do that because I definitely can shoot turn one, right? And I shoot pretty well. So I, I don't know. I don't know. It, it's a decision. I guess going second lets you get onto the objectives because we don't know what they are just yet. So that's a consideration. Uh, anyway, the elves move forward, as you can see. I run forward with my tall spear horde. They're the only thing that can because everything else is either, well, the only thing that would. Uh, because the uh, these guys are bogged down by terrain because of the deployment uh and then this got to run forward but there's not a whole lot my opponent can do about it and they only have 12 units total so uh pushing aggressively is something i want to do i want to take the center right now and force them back um so that's going to be it i do place my stormwind cab up onto this hill so i have line of sight on almost everything they have an 18 inch charge uh they're both elite and uh and vicious and then they also will get tc3 charging down this hill so it's, it's pretty exciting there i put both my wizards onto the hill at least 50 percent. one of the models is metal so it's just sort of falling down but um they can then see whatever i want uh for without getting a uh, obfuscated by terrain uh, and then again that lightning bolt 13 with elite is pretty deadly uh, and then i also move forward on the left side here i move forward with my silver breeze to get them in range i do make a slight error which is i pull these silver breeze around to fill this gap but i don't really need to do that just yet right like i don't need to support this area i'm probably not going to be pushing there anytime soon and i'm speed 10 so uh but it was a minor error and mostly because i thought i'd be within 18 inches of this target i'm not within 18 inches so it sucks a little bit but anyway uh, I make a small mistake there. But the rest of it, I like uh, keeping the Draken Riders again on the hill. That's just so they can see whatever I want them to see. They're, they're height 7. They're not going to get a benefit from charging down it, of course. But they've got a, a nice height advantage. And then I keep the King hidden a little bit. And all of these units, of course, out of charge range. Uh, and out of the breath range of this uh, Clan Lord on Fire Drake. Which I think might be a small mistake to deploy it back here, right? Because the Ancients already are inspiring this area. I probably would have deployed it off here on the, on the flank a bit more. Just to give it 2 inches more threat. So anyway, that's that. Let's get into the shooting. We open with my Lightning Bolt 13, firing into this Lachilodon. I do five wounds to it and get a waiver, so that's pretty nice. It's a sixth waiver, I think. So, you know, not the, not the, you know, about average, about what I'd expect is a waiver there. Uh, so I'm okay with that. And then over here, I fire uh, these guys into one of the units of Rhinosaurs. I do two damage, which is actually pretty high. And then the other one, unfortunately, can't fire into the same unit, so it fires at the other one, does two damage. I would much prefer to have four damage on one unit here, uh, especially this unit on the far left, because it's the farthest away from the Phoenix, and it would make it so the Phoenix has to choose the Lachilodon or the Rhinosaurs. But um, anyway... I did this instead, I guess. So that's going to be the end of turn, as or end of uh, turn for the elves. As you can see, a pretty decent amount of shooting going out uh, for my turn one. I'm I'm pretty happy with my positioning. So let's see what the salamanders do in their response. So salamanders, first off, uh, they move this Lachilodon up onto the hill uh, to fire. You can see back here the uh, the phoenix is already actually gone and healed three wounds uh, off of this Lachilodon. So. You know, it's what you get with healing. So they move uh, move on up, and they fire into my unit of Reapers, doing one damage, which is kind of whatever. Uh, I mean, it's not completely whatever, but it's pretty much. 
Uh, and then over here with our toggle coming around the side of this building to get some shots in, fires into my other Reapers, does three damage because our toggle always does, <laughs> or at least it seems when my opponent. I play against our toggle all the time. She is straight money. If you're not playing with her and you're playing Salamanders, you're missing out. So anyway, does three damage to those Reapers. And here is the end of turn shot. So let's talk about that movement a little bit because I uh, apparently glossed over it during my pictures. So first off, uh, my opponent just pushes forward with their tough line here. I mean, that's def six, def five, def five, uh, helping protect their tyrants, which obviously I want to shoot at. But because of the deployment on the terrain here, my opponent smartly chose to put the tyrants off here on as I would see with the left flank, away from these hills, right? So I can't just get my gun battery onto this hill and shoot over these units, right? I'd have to use this hill that way, and then I'm only range 18 with these, so... It, it's a bit messy. I again with this with this unit not uh, if pulling it this far forward or this far to my right was a bit of a mistake because again I could pull it to the left and maybe shoot into these um, tyrants. But my opponent's also utilizing the terrain anyway to get cover. So yeah, uh, just just good movement all around, uh, helping get some threats going, blocking any of the flank angles. You know, like uh, these. These Draken Riders are in the front of these uh, Ancients, for example, just to make sure that they don't get a flank and then just kill them in one go. Um, and just moving as they can forward, these guys have moved into threat range. They will mince uh, my my Elves, my Tall Spears, so I don't really want to get into that fight until I get some damage onto them. Um, but with this Phoenix back here, that might uh, prove problematic. Now, I do think my opponents made a mistake with this Ancient Troop, which I'll talk about during my turn two. Uh, oop, that should have been turn two, but I guess I took another picture. So turn two. <laughs> so turn two. Man, I've said that a lot. Starting out with the elf charges. Uh, we have nothing going on on the left here in terms of charge. I actually back up a little bit to be out of charge range of my opponent. Uh, that is because, again, I don't think Draken Riders should be heading in uh, too early, and I kind of want to stall this side of the field because, again, my opponent only has 12 units, and this is five of, or six of them, and these are pretty much all the combat units that is not this horde of uh, Ceremonial Guard. So I'm okay with these guys messing around with one Draken Rider horde and one unit of Silver Breeze and a, and a king, especially because my Silver Breeze can just move wherever they want, shoot wherever they want. So I'm I'm perfectly fine with this. Uh, I do move this unit of Silvery, Silver Breeze within charge range of the Clan Lord on Fire Drake, and that is because I'm not too worried about it. I mean, it could get a waiver, that would be bad, but this is a, a bit of a high risk, high reward, which is I can take these archers into the flank, uh, and then I can also take these guys into the flank of it uh, to at least ground it, since my opponent can't really do anything about it, right? Like, if I decide to take all those charges, they just can't, uh, can't respond in the same way that I assume they think I can't respond. Um, because these are, you know, archer units. But don't uh, don't underestimate elven archers. They are melee five plus with these ones, melee four plus with the uh, silvery. So they'll mess you up. Uh, I then charge in with this palace guard horde or horde. <laughs> that would be great, wouldn't it? Uh, this palace guard regiment. Uh, so this is a sacrifice. I have to jam this up right now because I want to move forward with my uh, with my Tall Spears. I need them protected from these Tyrants, because the Tyrants will also mince me. Uh, and then these guys uh, are being protected by these Archers, which it might not look like it, but I've got the exact corner right there, so there's just no way to land a unit. Uh, well, I guess Artakul might be able to land, but that's a terrible idea. Uh, and yeah, so these Palace Guard are just going to go in here and hope to, you know, do a damage or two because they also might be able to survive this charge. If our Tuckle hadn't done three damage to me, I'd be pretty confident. Um, just because if you strip the, uh, strip the Thunderous off of Rhinosaur Cav, they're nine attacks on threes and then they wound me on threes and I'm a 15, 17. So I'm not super worried about it. But, uh, given that I already have three damage on me, yeah, this is just a, a bit of a suicide charge there. Uh, now, the real charge that's happening this turn is over here with the uh, Stormwind Knights, which I mentioned in, in my previous round, which is my opponent has made a mistake with this Ancient Troop. Now, keep in mind, uh, generally, Ancient Troops are really hardy. I think they're a dash 14, uh, dash 14 and def 6, right? But these Stormwind Knights are charging down a hill, so they're Thunderous Charge 3, right? So I'm hitting on 3s, wounding on 3s, I've got Elite, and I have Vicious. So I'm like, I'll, I'm just going to go right through that unit. Uh, and then I line up with my Lightning Bolt again. I would love to shoot at this Lakilodon, but one, it has cover. 
um, because of this one and because of these units. I mean, I could put them both onto it and shoot it anyway, but I want to remove this Lachilodon. That would be clutch uh, because this Lachilodon has a flank charge onto my Stormwind Knights. And if I somehow fail this, right, uh, I don't want to get flanked there. So instead, I fire into this one. And... I mean, uh, Radiance of Life is just such a good rule. Like, uh, generally with healing units, I like to pepper many targets, right? So when you're hitting with heal 5, you're removing 2 damage instead of the 5 damage I did. Because I put 2, 1 plays 3 in another. Or you're removing 3, and I have 2 remaining. But with Radiance, you're also removing 1 in a bubble. So it's just kind of a mess whenever there's a, a mix of the 2. Or in this case, all in 1. So anyway, uh, that's going to be that. Let's talk about the shooting. Uh, I think... I'm not, well, I'm not sure where Argus went, but anyway, I mean, Argus is right here. I'm not sure where Argus's buff is going to go. So anyway, uh, we start out with the Lightning Bolts. Uh, we also have some Archer Shots into that Lachilodon, and we do four damage, which is pretty disappointing. Uh, my Archers all miss, which is, eh, that's kind of what Elven Archers do. Uh, but I do manage four damage, which is, again, a little below average uh, for the Lightning Bolts, especially, you know, I did two and two. So, uh, But four is better than zero, so I guess that's fine. And then over here with uh, the Silver Breeze, they fire into this unit of Rhinosaur Cav. I do three damage, so I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, these guys are now a 10 to kill. And again, if I'd been able to, to really get my shots in here, really uh, pound them down, I, I, I would have been really happy with this result because I could have had them at seven or so and forced that Phoenix to come over here and stop messing with those little Kilodons. But, yeah. So anyway, I don't get a waiver on either of those units, which is unfortunate, but it happens. Uh, and I take my Stormwind Cav in here, and yeah, we wipe them out in one go pretty easily. Uh, my opponent was surprised <laughs> for about a second until I was like, he was like, yeah, uh, I definitely forgot about the uh, the plus one thunder from the hill. So, you know, again, uh, just take advantage of that when you can, especially with elves. Uh, Stormwind Cav are one of those units that I think are a little maligned just because they're a 1416 unit and... I know that, like, again, it's a lore thing. It's the same with, like, the Kindred Archers, which are an amazing unit, but uh, kind of suck at archery. So the lore says they're good at archery, so what is going on there? These guys are uh, supposed to be this really elite unit, right? And, the, like, the Palace Guard are 1517, the Palace Guard an elite unit, and then these guys are 1416? What? But they're still an amazing unit. For 215 points, you get Def 5, you get that Thunder 2, and you get Elite. So it, they're just really good. So anyway, and your speed 9 is the big part, obviously. So with that, I turn to face the Lachilodons, hope, hoping they won't kill me. <laughs> uh, the Palace Guard here do... How many wounds do they do? They do pretty well. That's three wounds there. Uh, it's a 10 to take them out, uh, to pick them up. And I do actually get it on the first roll, but on the second, I fail. So, uh, you know, I, I wasn't going like, oh man, I just missed it. But yeah, it would have been obviously super nice to pick up that unit in one go. Uh, so with this, it's the end of the turn. As you can see, I picked up the one unit I was going for, but so far my shooting, uh, my shooting's been good on the wounds, right? But my target allocation's a little off, uh, and this unit in particular, I'm just using pretty poorly, uh, which is not what you want to be doing with elves. So with that, let's go into Salamander's turn two. So Salamander turn two looks a bit like this, or it looks exactly like this, uh, which is... I. Maybe the phoenix hasn't moved. Uh, it looks like the phoenix has wounds. I'm not sure how that happened. I might have shot it with some random archers. I could only... Yeah, maybe these archers shot or these archers shot and I did a wound or two. Uh, it looks like it. they stuck though. And that's saying something because this is Radiance and Regen 4+. plus. So I must have done two wounds there. Pretty fun. Um, or at least done... Yeah, I had to do two and then failed both the Regen and only got one back. So anyway... You can see these units are moving moving on up uh, on the left. They're just getting within the charge range and then making sure that the Draken Riders can't charge into these Tyrants. It is an impossible charge. I can charge into the uh, front of these guys, but what am I going to do there? And then uh, keeping the the uh, big Clan Lord out of my charge arc there, or out of my charge range, I should say, there. Uh, going into these cab, but I, as I said before, I thought I had moved these guys to have arc on it. I thought I put out the base, but I must have got it wrong because it's very obviously not an arc now. So anyway, uh, things happen, but at least I've got these archers, got the archer troop there that are in terrain for some reason. Uh, so anyway, this is a combo charge that my opponent takes. Um, this is illegal. Let's let's go back a picture. Oh, it's not. Okay, there we go. 
it's because the leader points right there. All right, because uh, the Rhinosaur, now my opponent's using some very small models, but these are height four, so they're taller than this. So anyway, they take the combo charge. It's easy enough. Uh, I don't, you know, pray, pray for Palace Guard. They're going to get wrecked. Uh, and then my opponent moves their shooting core forward a little bit. Um, probably looking to take out these archers, although maybe they'll go for some pip damage on this unit. Who knows? Uh, the Ceremonial Guard decide to strike down one of my troops of archers. Fair enough. And then one of the Lachilodons uh, just moves in front of the Stormwind to block their charge, but still allow them to shoot. I, I, don't, I don't know about this. I probably would have just taken the charge because I'm a Thunderous Charge 2 unit, right? I just think it's too important to strip that off, uh, especially because I don't think they're going to shoot at me. Maybe they are. Who knows? Maybe they just wanted to get both shots on me and go for a lucky waiver. They are 14, 16, so it's it's there. Uh, and that's going to be that, so let's talk about the shooting. So first off, we've got our Tockle. Maybe the, I think the Phoenix went for a heal uh, onto the Rhinosaur Cav to the uh, right in front of it over there. But our Tockle fires into my Archers, does three wounds to me. Uh, but Archers stay strong. And then over here, both these units fire into my Palace Guard with wound on them and do zero hits. Uh, so I'm really happy with that. Uh, <laughs> that's that's pretty phenomenal. Uh, and here we go with the... And neither of those units are wavered, obviously. The one took zero wounds, but the archers are fine. This guy goes into my uh, unit here and does six wounds to me and does not get a waiver. Uh, that is an eight to waiver, so it's kind of a big ask, but... Um, yeah, I, I'm obviously all for it. I'm disordered. Uh, and again, if I'd had if <laughs> if I had positioned this unit correctly, I could have sworn I did, right? It's what but it's one of those things where like maybe the unit was adjusted a little bit. You know, this this guy is not fully flush with me. Like all these things could happen and uh, you know, I just didn't have time to, <laughs> to mess around with that this night. So instead, uh, it looks like I'm going to have to get away. But I did get uh, a bit of luck there with only being disordered. So here is turn three. So turn three for the elves. Uh, first off, we have my elven king going into this unit of Rhinosaur Cav. Uh, they have five wounds on them, so I can maybe punch through them. Uh, I've got five attacks on twos and fours, but in reality, I'm not sure I want to punch through them uh, just because the tyrants can't charge anything if I don't, right? Because I'm shorter than, uh, than these guys are. And even with their three and a half inch move, can they... No, the three and a half inch shuffle, I don't think that they can clear and let them charge me uh, because they will clip the back of this unit. So I kind of just want these guys in the way because I they can't take an Elven King in combat. But, um, you know, we'll see about it. I do need to get in the way, though. So this kind of has to happen because I want to leave my Draken Riders right here and able to charge on the next turn. Because, again, I'm going to hold them back for another round just because these Tyrants will just mince them. Um, I roll back with this unit again to get it out of possible charging range of these tyrants just in case I do kill this unit. Uh, it's definitely possible. And then they could just bypass the king and run on by and hit my corner. Uh, so anyway, we're going to go for that. Uh, I <laughs> in, in the middle, I do move my uh, Silver Breeze away. I decide that I don't want them to just be uh, immediately killed by this uh, clan lord on, on Drake. So I can just uh, pivot or uh, disengage one and then I can pivot uh, because I'm nimble, move, and then, you know, end up over here. So I'm out of its out of its charge arc. I take the archers into the flank. I am on sixes to hit, so not the best, but hopefully I can get it uh, grounded at least. That would obviously be the bit. Well, grounded actually doesn't matter too much right now. Um, this unit is actually safe from the, the clan lord I measured before, but uh, turning off its breath attack is big because I am, again, at eight wounds or six wounds there, so any damage uh, any damage hurts. And in my charge phase, I so I, I was doing the math here, and my opponent forgot about the hill, right? But I, on the other hand, forgot these guys have phalanx, so I'm like, yeah, 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 I've got the math on this, right? So I send this horde in, I've got uh, 30 attacks on fours and fours with elite, and then I have 12 attacks on threes and threes with, with elite, right? And the ma uh, hammer uh, or mace of crushing. Did I write hammer measured force on these guys too? It's not what they have. <laughs> they have the mace of crushing. Uh, so anyway, I, I was like, yeah, yeah, I think I've got the numbers to at least waver this unit, right? Uh, so I go in there and then I'm like, okay, so I'll take these archers into the Lachilodon just to shut down its shooting because again, elven archer troops are amazing. Uh, and then Argus can just sit in the middle of all this and inspire it, right? And then slap out an Argus onto this uh, this horde of dragons to uh, to make sure these guys are inspired. So that's going to be the plan with my lightning bolt again taking the hill, trying to 
I might try to take down a no. The Lakilodons are engaged. Obviously, I charged in with my knights. Um, what I'm gonna do this turn is go for the Phoenix because this is pretty much my one go, right? Phoenixes are are, are I think a 1315, but they're def three. So I have Lightning Bolt 13, right? And I'm just gonna try to wipe it out right now because that would be a big, big kill. Uh, and if I do poorly on my damage, it's pretty much just gonna be mitigated anyway. So I'm just gonna go for this Phoenix right now. It's my one shot. Do not miss your chance to kill. Uh, so here we go with our shooting. Do not miss, guys. And yeah, <laughs> I don't do terribly well. Uh, with my 13 shots, I do, I sink six wounds. Um, so not the best, but I do get a waiver. So at least there's that, uh, it, you know, a, a waiver. I think a waiver is pretty good here. It's about what I could have expected from it, but not what I wanted, right? So uh, yeah, hopefully it just doesn't regen all of its wounds back. And then over here with my archers going into the Lachilodon, uh, I, I do four wounds because archers are killers, but unfortunately my nerve checks are a little off, as you might have noticed, uh, and I don't even waver it, so it's it's still ready to go. Again, it, it, I wasn't looking for a big kill here, but considering I got it up to six wounds, I was, you know, a five is not a big ask uh, on the waiver there, and that would have been really nice. Uh, obviously a seven is not even a big ask to kill it, but at least a five to get that waiver, but unfortunately I can't. And, um, yeah, but, uh, oop, this is a bad picture, but my knights do walk through the other Lakildon, so there's that, at least. And then over here in this combat, yeah, <laughs> this is about when I realize, uh, yeah, these guys only wound on fours. Um, but, you know, a bit of struggle luck. These guys roll terribly. I only hit twice. Uh, I hit three times after Elite, because out of 12 attacks, I think I rolled seven ones. Uh, and then these guys, I actually rolled 12 ones in their batch, but they end up equaling it out a little bit. And I think I get these guys up to like 12-ish wounds, which is around what I what I should be doing, uh, assuming that these guys don't have, or uh, around what I'd expect. I shouldn't say should. Uh, around what I'd expect to be doing here, uh, while these guys don't have thunder. So anyway, uh, a big mistake by me, uh, miss... <laughs> <laughs> misunderstanding that these guys have phalanx, uh, but still, maybe the math wasn't with me anyway. Yep, get them up to 12. I don't get a waiver there. That's a 9 to waiver, I think. They're, I think they're 21, 23. They're either that or 21, 22, an 8, 9. Nah, not that big of a deal. Anyway, in this combat, uh, my king rolls in and just punks those guys. Uh, really high nerve, and I'm like, cool. <laughs> but at least on my overrun, I am perfectly out of line of sight of this unit, so I'm just going to be charged by tyrants. Uh, it, I mean, they're a 4 plus unit, but they have 30 attacks, right? So that's uh, 10 wounds on average. It's going to be a 5 to kill me twice. I mean, it's it's not the best odds, but those aren't bad odds at all. So, oof, it's going to be mess. Especially, oh no, they have FGs of fire. It's actually even better. So anyway, here is the end of turn three for the elves. As you can see, things are going a little interestingly, uh, just because I can't pull these units off, and because my opponent can leverage this this heal, it's difficult for me to uh, to keep that damage upright. Right? I guess that's a poor way of explaining it. I have a lot of small pieces of range damage, right? But right now, I'm not getting the the high nerve checks to get my get my waivers going where I need them right here, or get my kills going right like around here so instead my opponent's just going to be able to uh, slowly chip away at that chip damage i'm doing uh, so it's a little counterproductive and their combat prowess is obviously a lot higher than mine so it's a little unfortunate but let's see what the salamanders have with turn three so salamanders turn three things are definitely getting interesting uh first off we've got the tyrants on the left here yeah they just go right into that king uh, these guys just sort of shamble about um this movement i'm not exactly sure with uh, i because these guys are out of the charge range of my Draken Riders, so I'm not sure why they're moving like that. But they did, so they moved on up. Maybe they're protecting our Tackle. Uh, so our Tackle's sitting there in the woods. This guy countercharges me. Oh, I forgot to mention, my archers did do uh, two wounds to this guy. So suck it, Clan Lord on Fire Drake. Archers are the best, uh, and we grounded it. So just takes the countercharge there. Then in charges, my opponent goes for a bit of a risky play here. Uh, and in my opponent, in my opinion, the wrong play which is this unit already has 12 damage on it and I wavered this phoenix so it's a big turn for for me right or my next turn will be a big turn because they can't remove anything but the one damage from radiance of life right so my opponent goes originally and goes okay so I'll double charge this unit of spearmen and I'm like okay and then they take it back and decide in the end what they're going to do is single charge here with the tyrants and then single charge here onto my reapers or not reapers onto my uh palace guard 
because they in their mind they're like well the palace guard even with 12 attacks could one round this right and i'm like yeah but now you risk not removing the spears right and like you definitely want to remove the spears over the palace guard so anyway it's a it's a high risk high reward play i would have probably just gone for the double onto the spears and assumed that the palace guard either a can't punch through you or b won't right so that's my thoughts. Uh, then again, because I didn't get a waiver, I didn't get a five on this little Killadon, it gets an easy charge into my knights. So I'm going to be trapped here for another round because originally my opponent just moved them, uh, saw that they could flank charge into my archers, went for that. And then I'm like, well, I can still pivot past you into this unit. And they're like, okay, what if I just move over here? It wasn't doable. So they just went, ah, screw it, took the charge. So they're going into me there. Uh, and that's going to be that. Let's Let's see what shooting has to do with it. So we've got our Tackle. I think our Tackle's the only shooting this turn. Firing into my Archers. They get me up to 8 damage. And our Tackle rolls that hot double 1. So it's a 6 to waver me. Uh, it's it's pretty unlikely to kill me 8 rerollable because of uh, Argus up here. But uh, not even getting the 6 is uh, not quite not getting my 5. Because this unit is not as relevant as the Lachilodon. And of course a 6 is uh, uh, harder to get than a... Or a 6 is easier to get than a 5. But anyway, or five is easier to get than a six. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so anyway, they get a double one there, and uh, that's unfortunate for my opponent. So maybe my turn four will be a big one. Uh, and over here in the combat, yeah, this uh, I, I don't expect too much. The Lachilodon, I think, has five attacks. I know it hits on a five plus in combat, and then has crush one. So maybe it does a wound. It'll definitely strip my thunder, right, which sucks. But uh, oh, no, it, uh, it definitely wavers me. <laughs> so yeah, five attacks on fives to hit and fours to wound. It manages three wounds, which is pretty nuts, and then rolls the 11 to waver me. And I'm like, F <laughs> did I just lose? So anyway, it it's, it's, it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad, but we'll see if... Uh, what'll happen with that because I just don't have a lot on this right flank right now but in, over here in the combats the tyrants go into my spears and manage a mere 15 wounds which is uh quite a few considering they only have 30 attacks uh they manage 15 wounds on me but they can't seal the deal uh don't even roll the six to waver me so my opponents miss two sixes this turn and again I'm just ready to go so uh maybe I can maybe I can pull it back with that uh, these guys, on the other hand, get into a fight with the Ceremonial Guard, and uh, blah, the Ceremonial Guard do an insane number of wounds, uh, not even close to uh, to needing anything but a double one. Uh, they are trapped, on the other hand, so they can back up, and that's it. They can't go to the side, they can't reform, they've got nothing. So instead, uh, they can just back up, so they just sit still, you know, because why not? So with that, uh, we get into the Tyrant fight with my King. Uh, and yeah, they just one-shot it. Uh, they got it. They actually get it to double one, which isn't that unlikely. Again, they pop their. I think they pop their effigy this turn. So uh, yeah, it's unfortunate for the king, but uh, the things we do for duty. So it's out of the way, and here is the end of turn shot. Now this is the end of uh, Salamander's turn three. I've got to do something with the elves right now. Uh, a lot of these units are damaged, right? This uh, two wounds is on the Drake, which is overrun past my archers that it killed. Uh, this is also a bit. Uh, oh, I'm not sure this is unfortunate. Uh, they they did roll max for their overrun, but I'm not sure I really care. Uh, this is the unfortunate bit because again I got this waiver. Uh, I have nothing I can do about it, and then this guy can just charge in on his next turn. I can't even back up out of it. So I'm like, Ugh. oh, that's the unfortunate part, because they got the max. If they had rolled one below, right, so this was, I think this was a five over one to hit my edge. But if they'd rolled a four or lower, uh, I can actually back up out of this thing's charge range. But they didn't, so, uh, you know whatever <laughs> but uh i can i can get some real kills going here because this is really damaged if i don't kill this unit it's probably game over um but uh i'm gonna i'm gonna go here the phoenix regen almost every wound uh i think it's down to no it didn't almost every wound it's, i think it's down to two wounds right now it was at six or seven uh so it's it's uh, it's still wounded i guess uh these guys are at four these guys are at a couple because i had some bow shots that couldn't go anywhere else but this is undamaged the tyrant both the tyrants are undamaged so my opponent's doing a really good job of protecting their uh, their real meat units right now so let's see what the elves can do with their turn four so Elvin turn four, you can see the charges. First off, I take the Draken Riders. Uh, it's again, this is the part I didn't get. I, I I think my opponent didn't see it um, in the same way that I didn't really see it until I was 
you know, planning out my turn. But uh, my Draken Riders can just charge right into this unit. I don't even hit this wall. Uh, so I fit pretty snugly right there. I get a free charge here, and then neither of these... Well, these guys can't see me. And then if I win the combat, I can overrun any amount of distance and not be seen by the tyrants. Or I could even uh, pivot, right, in such a way, like I could I could pivot more like this, which is probably the smart move. But anyway, they because these can see pretty much this corner of my base uh, only. So I can just pivot very slightly and be fine. So anyway... Um, in the other on or on the other side of the table, I take these guys go into the uh, front. I take the spears go into the front, just looking to kill these guys off before I die, because the tyrants will probably kill me. Uh, and then I also take the archers into the flank because one, I don't have any good shots without moving, which means I don't have any good shots. And two, I need I need to do damage here. So these guys are just going for that one extra damage. They've got fourteen attacks on fives and fives, so maybe they'll do something. Uh, actually, it's uh, it's on fours, fours and fours. Uh, no, yeah, it's on fours and fours, right? Because phalanx only works to the front, and these guys aren't on the hill, and I was on the hill. But anyway, it doesn't really matter too much. Uh, this sucks. <laughs> I do, in the end, back them up, but uh, you, you can't see it at this point. I, I readjust after I took this picture a little bit. These guys back up. Uh, I made it so the tyrants have to roll max to charge me, and then they'll have to do something about the spears. Right? Argus and all of my characters just spread out to make sure that there's no overrun where this can, over, can hit this and overrun into anything else. So that's the plan. Let's get into shooting. So with my shooting, I fire the lightning bolts and my uh, cav here into, and these cav, all into the tyrants. They are unwounded, but all of these shots are without cover. So that's 13 shots on fours and threes with elite, and then 28 shots on fours and fours with elite. And I manage 11 wounds, uh, which one isn't all that great. But even worse, I can't roll the six. <laughs> so I roll a three, and I'm like, oh my god. So that's going to be it for shooting. Uh, we get into combat. Thankfully, I do manage to kill this unit off, but that's, you know, not saying too much. Uh, and yeah, my my Draken Riders with, <laughs> with uh, threes and twos on Elite with a unit that uh, already had four wounds on it. Yeah, they roll right through it. But at this point, I, I, I admit I was a little tilted, so I didn't even think about the idea that uh, all I needed to do was adjust my facing. So I went forward, which was dumb. Um, but anyway, that is going to be the end of the turn, and here's the end of turn shot. Uh, so yeah, because I got th this unit, if this was a big, this was obviously a big uh, swing turn for me, which is I could have killed this unit off, and then if I had managed to actually shoot this unit down and then kill this, I'm not, I, I could have pivoted with the Draken Riders, right? And then I'm in a really good spot because they'll have to kill this with probably shooting because these have to go into my knights who are at three wounds right now, which is again, unfortunate, but um, they, that's, you know, it's 15 attacks on threes and threes. Again, not great, but not perfect. So maybe they only get a waiver, and maybe it takes another turn for this uh, clan lord to kill me. Or even if it does, uh, I have my own flying unit that's uh, all, uh, completely unwounded, ready to rock in the middle of the table. But instead, these tyrants are ready to go. So we'll, we'll just have to see. Maybe they'll roll boy, right? And here we go with Salamander's turn four. So the tyrants go into my spears. That's fair enough. I mean, the spears are... <laughs> not feeling great uh the phoenix and our tackle both move forward so they can uh split their fire our tackles range 18 which is the big reason why our tackles so much better than firebrand um so really utilizing it to get a bead on both these units uh just to try to take them down and then the phoenix can't quite reach these guys but can reach these uh it could have moved in such a way where it could reach this unit but i think it wanted to make sure it had radiance onto the uh onto the tyrants so i think that's fair uh, they will kill it on here, just moves forward. Again, unfortunate that I only did six wounds to it, but eh. And then this uh, goes into, or not that I, that, I, that I haven't killed it, right? That I got wavered. Uh, so again, this guy goes into my cav. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Uh, and these tyrants just turn to face into the flank of my dragon riders. Uh, rough, rough for me. And the ancients just uh, mill about in the background. But uh, let's see what their shooting does. Starting with the Phoenix, fires into this unit, gets me up to 12 damage. Uh, and then our Tackle fires into this, does 2 damage. And at the end of that, this unit's dead, and the other unit is fine. But then my Cav are popped by the Clan Lord. The Tyrants easily pop my horde of, um, of uh, spears. And here's the end of turn shot. So again, if I'd been man been able to kill off this horde of tyrants, not only would I a not have to kill the horde of tyrants again, uh, I would b 
be uh, these guys would have to actually shoot into my spears to make sure they're dead. So I wouldn't have lost. I, I probably wouldn't have lost this unit. Um, but anyway, not what happened. <laughs> so uh, the elves are now really on the back foot. But I still have quite a few units. And again, all of these all of these guys are wounded. Like everything on the on the. Uh, uh, Salamander side of the board that is not Artakel is wounded and pretty seriously wounded. Well, I guess the Phoenix isn't seriously wounded. I think it's actually at full health now. But like this, uh, and these Tyrants aren't wounded. But the Ancients are wounded. Uh, these guys are almost dead. This has two wounds on it, and this is almost dead. So I could still pull it out. I've got a lot of shooting, and I'm very fast. So let's see what I've got with turn five. So Elf turn five. Okay, so this is another go for broke <laughs> turn. So I move my lightning bolt here into the woods. Uh, I'm going to plant. I'm, I'm shooting at our toggle this turn. I'd love to re be removing unit strength, but I have to. I have to actually pop targets. So I'm going to move here to shoot at our toggle. I can still see the Lakilodon because I have um, my other wizard over here ready to shoot into the Lakilodon. So I'm going to hope to get it with lightning bolt five. If I don't get it with that, I'll go for lightning bolt eight. But if I do get it with this, or get it to double ones, uh, I'll fire the Lightning Bolt 8 at our, at our toggle and go for broke. Uh, then I move these guys around. Um, the only thing that can target me is the Phoenix, uh, assuming I get our toggle, which is assuming a lot. But I can't do too much about it, so I'm just going to go around and shoot into these guys. Uh, nothing here can see me, so that's good. Uh, and then I take my Draken Riders and I charge into the Wounded Horde of Tyrants. Um, this isn't the worst thing because, again, uh, not to harp on these tyrants being dead or not, but because of my mispositioning and overrunning instead, I didn't really have anything to do besides charge these tyrants. So it's kind of a blessing in disguise <laughs> that my opponent gave it to me. So I'm going to go for that. Uh, and then these archers just move out of the line of sight of the clan lord because, again, this is a scoring unit and I might need it. Oh, I forgot to mention it. So at the end of turn three, yeah, we've got all the tokens revealed. So the two pointer is over there, right? And then the other two-pointer is right here. Then down here in the bottom left, we've got a one-pointer. Uh, this is a one-pointer. And then there's a one-pointer somewhere in here. And then off in the corner over here is another one-pointer. Um, so the big ones are obviously this one, the mystery one over here, and this one, this one, and this one is what we're fighting over for the most part. Uh, but we're going to have to see... I mean, this... This two-pointer, my opponent still has a flying unit, right? They can just walk over there and just blow my archers right off of it. But if I can get this guy, like, if I can get this down, and then our toggle down, and this down, right? If I just magic this, uh, I can then start tar uh, targeting this and just run away from these units because they're too slow to chase me, right? Uh, but I'll have to do something about the Phoenix, too. It's just, it's I'm in a rough place. But let's see what I've got in this turn with shooting. So starting out... Oh, this is actually the end of turn shot. So with my shooting, with my Lightning Bolt 5, I do get the will kill it on to double ones. Now it's double ones to waver. Uh, it was a four to kill, or maybe a five to kill. Four or five to kill. Uh, and I went, okay, I can't I can't waste shots. So I just take that and I go, I'll, I'll just assume I roll it, right? And then I shoot my Lightning Bolt uh, 8. Unfortunately, I only managed two wounds on our toggle, which super sucks because, again, I've got eight shots on fours and I think twos or is she threes? Uh, anyway, I, I only do two wounds, which isn't, it, it, I'm not trying to say that's a bad number of wounds. It just sucks considering what I have to do here, right? I got to get this turn going. Uh, the archers, because they are very good. Uh, I love these archers. Fire into the phoenix. They manage one wound, even with uh, <laughs> even with movement and cover. I manage one wound, so pretty cool. Uh, then these archers, again, kind of poop themselves. Uh, I only hit three times, and I do two wounds, which is great out of those three, but I only hit three times. So, uh, yeah, the wounds are a little messy, and this is the big thing, which is I kill the tyrants, but I had to overrun two inches, right, to get out of the charge. So I, I can't turn. I, I, I can't take these guys and turn this way towards the tyrants because this will charge me in the rear. But I have a great overrun. As long as I overrun two inches, right, the tyrants cannot possibly charge me. None of this can charge me. And then I can just take the clan lord in the front, which is only crushed two. So I, I think I'll be able to handle it. Uh, the clan lord could try to kill Argus this turn, but I believe I've given this guy in double inspire. So Argus and then Argus is inspire. So he'll be inspired no matter what. Uh, and then, oh, no, 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 I gave Inspire to this unit. Uh, it's that uh, if they go after Argus, uh, Argus, uh, they cannot overrun into this unit. And then Argus is actually pretty difficult to kill off at a dash 13, def 5. So uh, if, if our Tackle and the Phoenix try to go into it, 
probably can't do it. So anyway, that is the end of Elf Turn 5. Let's see what Salamanders can do. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so I over I overrun one inch in case you were wondering, and of course these guys roll their max uh, max charge distance and get in there. Uh, the phoenix just walks behind these guys. Not that that really matters. Uh, and then this just moves around to breathe fire onto my uh, my archers. I actually would have probably taken the phoenix and gone to breathe fire onto the archers as well, uh, just because these guys are so tall that and our tackles following them that they're probably gonna die anyway. But anyway, this is what they go for, and here is the end of turn shot, which is, these are wavered, the archers of course are fine, because they're amazing, and then, yeah, 90 attacks to the rear, even on fives, is just enough to pop my dragons in one go, and that is going to be the end of the game. So, some unfortunate rolls for me, but that's sort of how, uh, it, it's just showing off that I misplayed with these elves, um, because elves really the point of playing an elf army is to dice fix right you get all those elite rolls you get uh, pretty good uh, pretty good nerve pretty good defense pretty good shooting pretty good melee right and you just need to be able to to combine them in the right areas and i just wasn't so my opponent uh, did a great job protecting their tyrants and then on the few times they were exposed i rolled uh, a little below average or they rolled a little above average but i could have made that uh not just not possible and i played a little bit better so anyway, as I said before, let's talk about the list. So here we go with the Salamanders. Uh, I obviously like this army. My opponents played it a few times against me. Uh, it is low unit, uh, unit count and decent unit strength, but I don't think that's really relevant. Honestly, unit strength is so irrelevant. I wish this actually just said scoring units. Um, and then maybe unit strength in another bracket. But scoring units is way more, way more important than unit strength. Anyway. If you're going to run a 12 unit count army, Salamanders are a great way to do it. Uh, they're just very powerful. They Most of their power is in units that are already fearless. Uh, the Ceremonial Guard are just... Oh, they're so good. They're so good. And I remember when the edition started and people were like, what is this unit? Why would you ever bring it? And you're like, uh, <laughs> okay. But it's it's such a good unit, especially with Brew of Strength. You know, having Death 5, Phalanx, Decent Nerve, good unit strength, and then Crush 2 amazing uh effigy of fire needs a bit of a change because i know right now in easy army it says you roll uh you so it's the way effigy of fire works is that you get to reroll d3 failed wounds right so easy army is saying like every other version of this in the game that you choose to do this before you roll to wound but that's not what it says in the rule book. The rule book states you choose it after, which makes this amazing. For five points, choosing to fix your roll after you've rolled your number of wounds is fantastic. Always take. Um, so anyway, just a bit of a thing right there. I would always go with the rule book, right? Um, it doesn't feel right, but I'm not a rye player. I think that's a nonsense way to play. So yeah, uh, just just get that effigy of fire in there for now. Uh, <laughs> they might fix it in the future. Who knows? But uh, yeah, really strong. And then of course, tyrant hordes are great. Rhinosaur calf regiments are amazing chaff. Uh, the only thing about this list I don't like is the ancient regiment. Um, I'm not sure if that's just because they couldn't spend the points somewhere else uh, from upgrading from a troop to a regiment, but I just don't see the point in a regiment over a troop. I would always run a troop unless I literally could not spend points elsewhere. So anyway, that's my thoughts on the army. It's a, it's very elite. It's susceptible to dying, right? But if it doesn't, whew, it hits like a bag of bricks. If you like that style of play, check it out. For my elf army... I think it's pretty good. Uh, I actually really like it. There's not a lot of things I would change. Um, although, I, if I continue playing uh, Elves, I'll probably do some pretty significant changes. But that's only because in the new Clash of Kings pack, uh, stuff like the Glade Stalkers unlocking and the Chariots unlocking just makes it so I go, yeah, I'd, I'd prefer... Like, Palace Guard regiments are good, right? Don't get me wrong. I actually like them quite a bit. But over Glade Stalker regiments and this style of list, yeah, I'll take the Glade Stalkers, please. So, um, in the future, I'll probably drop both the Palace Guard down to Glade Stalker. Unfortunately, that price increase means I probably have to drop the Stormwind Cav down to a Regiment of Chariots for the unlock. But I, that is not an indictment on any of these units. I think they're excellent, especially the Stormwind Cav. Uh, in fact, they're so good, I might be looking at getting those points elsewhere. Now, one of the places is the Elven King with the Boots of the Seven Leagues. It's fun. It's a really fun thing to do to have this uh, speed uh, speed nine hero that's on a 
cav base, right? They can just zoom up the field uh, with its scout move and then charge you turn one with a two plus duelist. Uh, really fun. But uh, yeah, it might be a bit much. <laughs> so I'll probably take the boots off. Uh, that would actually, I think, afford me the palace guard regiment to, um, to glade sucker. I think they're 15 points more per regiment. Uh, so I might just do that and then leave the rest of the army as is. Although the Mace Crushing is a uh, not the best item i just don't have five points but anyway the rest of it uh, yeah this would become mesa crushing probably on the elven king then um but i like this list it's really fun if you guys like elves i think that 14 unit count i don't like i don't like playing 12 unit count to begin with but i don't think elves are the place to do it anyway i think around 14 to 15 is where you want an elf army uh and i think people are sleeping on kindred archer troops they are so good uh such a good unit uh, I'm not even sure I would ever run the, the swarm over the over the troop, uh, the archer troop, because for five more points you gain a range attack. You're still melee five plus. You're still speed. I mean, you speed six instead of speed eight. But you're just su there's such a good unit. Melee five plus, defense four plus, ten twelve unit with a range attack and speed six. Amazing chaff. So I really like them, and I hope you guys liked this battle report. And until next time, bye.